Hey guys, my name is Scoby and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to play SNES games on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So the first thing you need for today's video is to actually already have RetroArch and Dev Mode installed on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. Now that's not something I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do in today's video. However, I do have a previous video where I show you the entire process and walk through everything step by step. I'll be leaving a card on screen and leaving it linked in the description down below. So once you have your Xbox fully set up, we're going to be taking any external drive and we're going to be connecting it into our PC. So currently I have one of my PC right now and I actually have some game files in it already. I will be mentioning in today's video, I'm not going to be showing you where to download games although games are really really easy to find a quick google search can help you out here or you can feel free to dump or create backups of any existing games you have again not something i'm going to be showing you in today's video but again a quick google search will help you out with this once you have your games downloaded they will most likely come in a dot zip file now thankfully with retroarch we can actually load our games directly from a dot zip however personally i always like to extract my games before i do anything else so what i'm going to be doing is extracting this dot zip and getting my game out into a dot smc file which is what we need for retroarch what we need to do is right click click extract all, click extract in the pop up here, and then your game is going to extract. You'll then get a new extracted folder with a .smc game file, and that's exactly what we need for RetroArch. From this point, we can just take this external USB drive and connect it directly to our Xbox. Now, if this is your first time connecting this drive up to an Xbox, you may get this pop up asking if you'd like to use it as media storage or as Xbox game storage. For this pop up, it's really important that we select use as media storage and not as Xbox storage. Media storage will allow us to put any game files and types on here that we want. Xbox storage will only allow you to install xbox games on it and will completely format the drive means you have to do the first step again of putting games on this so make sure you select use as a media drive once your drive is fully connected to your xbox what we're going to be doing is coming down here to our games and app section and launching retroarch you can also feel free to launch it from the normal xbox home either of these will work fine however i'm simply going to be launching it from here now once retroarch opens up since we already have all of our cores set up from the previous video i've showed what we're going to be doing is coming to the first section right here we're going to be coming to the load content option we're then going to be selecting whatever direct you have your games on now for me my drive is currently partitioned so it shows up and split between my e and f drive however if your drive is not partitioned most likely all of your files will be in your e drive for me however they're in my f drive in my xbox folder and in my roms folder i'm then going to be selecting my snes folder and then i'll find my donkey kong country and then, then find my smc file that we had extracted previously if i select this the next step we'll have to do is select which snes core we would like to use now for today's video i'm going to be using snes 9x however you can feel free to play around with any of the other cores here as well BLS NES is also another good option. For me personally, I like the SNES 9X core. However, you can feel free to experiment. Some cores will do slightly different things than the other. So it really depends on your preferences here. I'll be leaving some extra links in the description down below. You can check it out. Get some more information on the different cores. Once you've found your core, simply click the A button and then your game will start to load up. Now, depending on your external drive, this can take a second or two to start up. So don't be worried too much. And eventually it will start to load up and play. Now, from this point, since we've already set up our menu controls from the previous video, I can actually click down and select and my menu will show up here in RetroArch. So you can feel free to play around at any other settings here you want, along with options, play around with some latency, controls, cheats, shaders, and a bunch of other things. So we actually still have access to everything here, which is really nice. For me, I'm just going to be clicking resume again, and I can actually start playing my game here right away. And the emulation with RetroArch actually runs really, really smooth. There's literally no issues with any of the games I've tried whatsoever, and everything works really, really well. Even using the Xbox controller here is a really nice addition. Now to close your game and get back out to the main menu, I'm going to be opening up my RetroArch menu again. I'm going to be clicking close content, and I'm going to be brought back out to the RetroArch UI. Now, one thing I'm not going to be showing you in today's video that can also be useful is setting up a game playlist. This can be a really nice thing that basically takes all the same game file types, attaches them to an emulator, adds them as quick links on your home screen, and can make it a lot easier to find and locate your ROMs rather than manually doing it every time. I'm not going to be showing you that in today's video. I'm actually going to be leaving a card on screen and the link in the description down below to my previous video where I'll show you how to do that, just so this video isn't too long and that other video is more focused on doing just that. Anyway, guys, it's as easy as that to play snes games on your xbox series x or your xbox series s if you guys enjoyed this tutorial be sure to drop a like subscribe if you're new check out the other videos on the channel i'm going to be leaving a link down below to my paypal if you found these videos helpful and you want to support me anyway guys thank you so much for watching until next time as always keep it saucy peace